And here we go. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is broadcasting live all the way from Lebanon, where he owns a hospital that serves only vegan food. Is that amazing? Please welcome to the show, George Hayek. It's so nice to meet you, George. Thank you so much, Chef AJ. It's really an honor for me to be with you. And I was really looking forward to this interview. I, I cannot wait. So I heard of you by listening to a podcast by Jane Velez Mitchell, who's been on the show. And I was just blown away by the fact that there is such a hospital in the world. Why isn't every hot, you know, it should be that every hospital serves vegan food and maybe a couple don't like that should be the, the ones, you know, the norm. right. And, and it's like, I, I just, I want to hear all about how you made that happen. But first I'd like to know a little bit about you because obviously you're vegan. If you weren't, you probably wouldn't care so much about having the patients in the hospital eat vegan food. When did you become vegan? How, and what's it like being vegan in the Middle East? Great. So first of all, uh, my name is George Haik from Beirut, Lebanon. I was born in January 5th, 1980. Um, my education is uh, management from the Lebanese American University. And then I continued my MBA as well. Um, and then I opened uh, my eyes into veganism, uh, thanks to a friend of mine whom I used to consider as an annoying vegan activist, let's say, who uh, shared a, a video of a footage of a cow being slaughtered in an abattoir on my news feed. So first of all, I was really annoyed by, by my friend. I was really, uh, I felt really bad. Why would he want to, uh, to put such uh, horror uh, videos on my news feed and everyone's news feed? Uh, I, blamed, I blamed him a bit for doing so. But the same day I went back home. Uh, I uh, have four dogs at home whom I love so very much. And I started cuddling them and playing with them and giving them love and affection. And they were... Uh, as well giving me back love and affection. I looked at their eyes. I realized that there was someone looking back at me and suddenly it hit me that actually the, the, my dogs at home that I love so much uh, are, are no different than the cow that I'm having um, for dinner uh, at night or uh, this piece of bacon or ham or chicken or, or whatever. So. Uh, I realized that I was a bit of a hypocrite by, uh, uh, by uh, discriminating, let's say, between uh, animals whom are, uh, they told us that those animals are here to be cuddled and loved, and those are here to be uh, mutilated, slaughtered, and, uh, and cut into pieces so that we can enjoy their flesh. Uh, I felt the absurdity in my action, and this is when I started uh, doing my own research. And actually, this video that was shared by my annoying friend, who I, I consider now not annoying at all, actually, I thank him a lot for doing so. Uh, he planted a seed in my head, and this seed grew on me. Uh, he, he gave me the curiosity to know more about this industry, to know more about what I'm funding in a minimum of three times per day, uh, and I realized that actually what I was funding has nothing to do with my personality, has nothing to do with the person that I claim to be, because, well, I claim to be uh, a person who is, is against violence. I am against uh, injustice in general and uh, against oppression. So what I was consuming in a minimum of three times per day was nothing but oppression, um, uh, cruelty, violence, barbaric acts, well, you name it. So I, I dig more into that. First of all, well, I looked at it from the ethical perspective, which is all about veganism, let's say. And I, I figured to what degree uh, we live in an absurd world where there is like a common consensus that, uh, listen, we know that we are doing something wrong, but let's turn a blind eye because, well, it's convenient. And, uh, well, uh, we make money out of those animals. We, uh, we enjoy their flesh. So uh, it's pure selfishness from our species. Whereas uh, us as species, we don't uh, own the exclusivity to live on this planet, on this earth. Uh, well, we have fellow earthlings as well, and they have the right to live in this earth as much as we do. It's not because uh, we are more intelligent, we were able to, uh, to, uh, to conduct, uh, I mean, uh, problems or whatever. It, it doesn't mean that we have the right 
to uh, to uh, to treat other species uh, any 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 less different than than uh, than we treat each other. I mean, like the basic right of uh, live and let live and uh, without interference from uh, from us. So uh, yeah, I I looked at it from the ethical perspective, and it was really clear to me that what we're doing is completely immoral, and has nothing to do with being uh, like. Uh, uh, non-violent or against i mean uh, actions were uh, they they speak louder uh, they speak louder than words i mean i can pretend that i am the king of the world but if i don't uh, act so I, I i am i am nothing so uh, i i looked at myself in the mirror and i figured out that no i can't be the person that i claim, I claim to be when my action speaks differently so this is when I, I thought that uh, in order to do so, to be the person that I am, well, I should align my actions with uh, my beliefs. And uh, the answer was very clear to me. Uh, I should uh, remove completely animal products from my uh, living, whether it's for food, whether it's for uh, clothing, whether uh, for products that we buy every day. I wanted to make sure that I will no longer be uh, like participating or supporting or funding or sponsoring those industries, which actually, well, they rely nothing but uh, secrecy and their strongest weapon is secrecy. So uh, they do not show um, like exactly what's happening behind Sutter uh, House's walls. And I am sure that, well, if the majority of people of meat eaters, they are exposed with the harsh truth well, the majority of them will no longer be supporting because I truly believe that the majority of us aren't like bad people. The majority of, of us can't slaughter the animal themselves. Uh, so um, when they are exposed with the reality, with the truth, this is when they are supposed to have a stance towards what they uh, received as new information. And I do believe that, well, uh, we, uh, since we are living in an era where the uh, information is out there for everyone to see, well, we have the moral responsibility for us to uh, know better and to dig more into the information, especially the things that we buy. Well, if the, those things are reflections of, uh, of ourselves, well, it's all good. If not, well, we should stop. And uh, I, I did my, uh, my homework, my research. I found the horrible uh, behaviors and actions that are taking place in those industries. Uh, I, I, I took the decision that I didn't want to be part of that. And, well, I started uh, looking from the, uh, other than the ethical perspective, because it was, well, clear to me. Well, it turned out that animal agriculture uh, is the number one factor of climate change. And as you know, uh, we are living in an era where if we continue uh, doing what we're doing today, by 2050, we'll uh, have a fish, uh, fishless ocean. Uh, we are at the verge of the mass uh, extinction. So actually, so many devastating uh, effects on uh, our climate as well. So uh, if you want to look at it from the ethical perspective, it's clear. If you want to look at it from the environmental aspect, it's clear, especially with the cattle uh, industry where they produce CO2 and especially methane, which, which is extremely harmful for, for our climate. Uh, and if you want to look at it um, as well from uh, the health perspective, uh, well, uh, I own a hospital and I can assure you that, uh, well, uh, we receive patients that are mainly suffering from diseases that are caused by, by what they are injecting in their body. Let's not forget that our body is, a, uh, whenever uh, a, a disease pops up, it's like our body is trying to tell us something. It's trying to tell us that something is wrong in the way we're living, uh, whether it's uh, smoking cigarettes or drinking alcohol or or injecting uh, toxic foods in our body, well, it will only but show up in our body sooner or later. So uh, the hospitals are full of those uh, patients. Uh, well, uh, it turned out as well that um, uh, all major uh, healthcare institutes, they uh, state that, well, uh, uh, meat in general is carcinogenic and to go more into detail, well, the processed meat has been classified as 1A carcinogenic. We're talking ham, bacon, uh, salami, charcuterie, uh, hot dogs, sausages. Group 1A, same, same category as tobacco. Can you imagine that? And no one even turned 
she tried to listen to that. This was back in 2015 when the WHO, the World Health Organization, they stated this. No one uh, ever took uh, uh, the courage to know more or to take this into account, to take this seriously. Whereas when we had the COVID two years back, uh, the WHO, they gave uh, instructions on how to take measures, you know, to wash our hands, to wear gloves, to wear masks, to take social distancing, and to close all, all the major businesses, but, but to keep open slaughterhouses, uh, so-called essential businesses. Those are the root cause of our uh, pandemics. When the CDC, they state that three out of four emerging uh, diseases in humans, they come from animals. Well, uh, I mean, we have more than 75% of all the pandemics that, that our world uh, has been through. Well, if it's not, about, it's, it's not about time, if it's not now for us to take uh, uh, the real measures, I mean, to treat, not just to treat symptoms. Okay, it's fine to wear a mask, it's fine to take social distance measures, to try to slow the spread of the disease or the, the pandemic or whatever. But this is not to tackle the root cause of our problem. This is not to, to tackle the root cause of our diseases, of our, of our pandemics. Uh, till now, corona isn't over. Uh, cases are, uh, are surging again. So it's, it's not over. Um, people tend to forget SARS was uh, jumped from animals. HIV jumped from animals. Uh, MERS. I mean, the majority of, of what we've been through, it's because our way of dealing with the animals. It's about time for us as humans to evolve. We can't just say that, listen, guys, uh, well, we've always done it this way. Well, actually, since we've always done it this way, maybe it's about time for us to change and to evolve as a species. I mean, uh, so many things we used to do uh, before and we changed because we figured out well, first of all, it's immoral, and second, that it's, uh, it might be harmful for the environment or for our health, and we stop. So why not, why not tackle this issue and look at the elephant right in the eye? That's great. You know, I have a similarity in, a, in my story. A veterinarian who was vegan actually said to me, you love your dog so much. How could you eat that cow? And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like instantly like that. I would love to meet your friend, the annoying vegan and thank him for what he did, because by influencing you, you're influencing so many people. I, I assume that this hospital that you owned, you owned it before it was a vegan hospital. Absolutely. Actually, it was established by my uh, grandfather back in 1972, right before the civil war in Lebanon. Actually, the hospital has been burned twice during the war. And we had the, de the determination to stand up again and to continue our journey. Um, my uh, my late father died uh, from cancer, uh, from prostate cancer, uh, which uh, uh, went through all his body and jumped into his bones. Uh, it was so uh, harmful for him, especially and for us as family to see him suffer. Um, when I knew, uh, well, the the major uh, uh, impactor for us to to be uh, to be affected and to hire the risk of having prostate cancer, uh, well, dairy, it turned out that dairy, uh, milk and cheese, well, they are directly related to prostate cancer when colon cancer is directly linked to meat and uh, all major diseases like the number one killer in human beings is, in, is, is, is a heart disease by clogged arteries. Well, hummus never clogged an artery. Tabuli never clogged an artery. Uh, you name it, the plant, plant-based food never clogged any artery. Well, it's, it's more than obvious for, for, for even a small child to know what to even clog arteries. So um, when, when I was exposed to all that, my father dying from, from cancer, my mother died from a stroke as well. Um, well, uh, so many uh, factors came, came out to play. So uh, first, before uh, transforming actually the hospital into uh, offering exclusively plant-based food, uh, back in 2014, I uh, opened uh, in all uh, innocent way uh, a page on Facebook called Lebanese Vegans. And I didn't know that uh, back, back then uh, I will grow uh, to an extent where it will be well uh, known uh, worldwide. And most of all, that is 
uh, being uh, that, that has uh, a strong impact on the community, especially that my approach is a bit different than, than many others. Uh, I have an unapologetic approach in my uh, outreach. Um, I actually speak out uh, on behalf of the animals, not on behalf of the oppressors. Uh, I, I, um, I know that, uh, well, by doing so, I might not be liked so much, but uh, then again, I'm not here to be liked. I'm not here to be popular. I'm not here to gain some notoriety. I'm just here to, uh, to speak up the truth and to defend those who can't defend themselves. So I opened, I opened up back in 2014, as I mentioned, Lebanese Vegans on uh, Facebook and then on Instagram. And then a uh, few years back, I launched, um, uh, I, I made it a legal NGO. I registered that in Lebanon. So now it's a legal NGO. And uh, as well, we opened up uh, back in 2020, uh, after the unfortunate uh, Beirut uh, explosion, the port explosion, the harbor explosion on the 4th of August, where uh, half of Beirut was completely destroyed. A lot of people lost their lives. A lot of people even lost their homes. Uh, they found themselves uh, homeless. This is when we took uh, the opportunity uh, uh, to uh, team up with other activists as well, one of the biggest activists, uh, which happens to be half Lebanese, half Armenian, his name is Seb Alex. When he reached out to us, he told us, listen, guys, I'm coming to Lebanon. We should do something. Um, and this is what happened. He came over. We gathered some donations. And we were there to, uh, to prepare ready-made meals uh, to the homeless uh, during this period after the explosion. And then, uh, well, we have a family old house. Uh, in Beirut, uh, I took the opportunity to open this uh, this uh, house and turn it into what is today uh, known as the Lebanese Vegan Social Hub. And this hub, actually, uh, we created uh, the space for everyone who would want to know more about veganism for vegans as well as non-vegan, especially non-vegan, so that we can talk to them, show them exactly what's happening, and most of all, uh, well, provide them with the, the information that they need. And uh, we open in the center uh, a cafe where we do offer every day on a daily basis free ready-made meals for everyone. Uh, and on Thursday, uh, our volunteers, they uh, go out in Beirut areas and to distribute, uh, not in the center, but to go outside and, and to do so. So, uh, so many uh, activities that we've been through at the centers and the center, what we're doing, we're doing activism through uh, outreach to uh, educational uh, sessions, uh, conferences, lectures, um, screening documentaries, like what the hell. So, uh, so many activities at the hub. Uh, uh, this and the hospital, well, uh, we, uh, we were working, uh, if you want, like hand in hand. I was collaborating with the hospital and the, the, the NGO Lebanese Vegan so that I, I, I could turn the hospital vegan because since I turned vegan and I started Lebanese Vegan, uh, I, I couldn't but apply what I was like preaching, right? So uh, in my line of business, well, I am fortunate enough to, uh, to be an owner of a hospital. And uh, well, I, uh, the, the, the answer was clear to me. I had to I had to turn the hospital vegan for all the reasons, whether my, fa my father dying from cancer, whether my mother dying from stroke, whether what's happening to the community, whether what's happening all over the world with the pandemic. So, so many friends, I've lost so many friends with the COVID. Uh, well, uh, so for all those reasons, for all, the, for all the moral consideration, most of all of what we're doing to the animals, uh, the answer was clear to me to turn the hospital vegan and to apply what I, what I talk about on a daily basis uh, in my line of business. So what I did actually is I didn't uh, went through a, a harsh, like uh, one day to the other transition because I didn't want to, to make like a shock for everyone. But what I did is I uh, went through a transition period of one year. Uh, and during this transition period, actually we've conducted the very first uh, vegan conferences in Lebanon entitled Why Vegan? And it was uh, done at the uh, hospital's auditorium. It was such a success. 
Now, if you want to, at the end of our um, interview, I can show you some slides and some pictures of what we're, we're covering in this interview uh, from the hub, for the, from the hospital, from our, our activism. Well, a bit uh, of everything, let's say. I can show you that at the end if you want to. So uh, we've been through this transition period and conducting the, the very first conference, which was a success. I didn't expect actually to, uh, to uh, have so much attendance back, back then. We gathered more than 350 people uh, at, the, at the conference. It was such a success. Uh, we had uh, lectures uh, from our dietitian, which happens to be vegan, from myself. I talked uh, from the ethical uh, perspective and uh, a fellow uh, volunteer as well. He tackled uh, the environmental aspect. So we tried to like talk about all the aspects because we know that we can't talk only about the moral aspect, especially in a country where people are struggling to uh, to uh, to find something to eat and everything. So we 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 should have we we uh, we decided like to tackle the the ethical aspect, of course, the animals, but as well as people. So this is why. Uh, we, we, we introduced the notion of veganism in Lebanon, talking about uh, morals and uh, the ethical aspects, uh, health aspect, of course, at the hospital since it was uh, conducted up there, and the environmental aspect, especially that I, I was talking to my friends as well, my friends who got married and have children. I was saying to them, listen, guys, don't, uh, aren't you worried? Uh, since you guys have children, aren't you worrying, uh, worried about the future of this planet? Which planet are you guys will be inheriting your children? So uh, do you want them to like be uh, facing uh, natural catastrophes and so on and so forth? So for all those reasons, uh, turning the hospital was a must for me during this period of transition conferences. Uh, I can name a few like the very first one, what the vegan, and then I screened what the hell uh, and dominion. And so actually I tried to cover all the aspects of veganism through this uh, year of transition. As well as uh, during this transition period, uh, we used to offer to our patients, well, unfortunately, uh, two, uh, two meals, one meal based on animal-based uh, animal uh, meal and the other one a plant-based meal. But every day our dietitian used to uh, go and during her, her, her visit to the patient, she tried to, uh, like, uh, she tried to explain why they should choose the plant-based uh, version uh, over the animal based with all the, the medical uh, information that uh, they need so that they can uh, themselves take the decision on why they should choose this over the other. Uh, after this one year uh, period, of course, I've conducted the seminars and conferences, especially to, uh, to my team, not just for the public, but for the team at the hospital, because as, as, you, as you probably know, not all my doctors are vegan, unfortunately, and not all my staff are vegan. This is what I'm trying to do, turn them slowly but surely, but unfortunately, they're not. So I had to at least provide them with information so that, first of all, they would know why I, as an owner of the hospital, I took this, this uh, decision. And as well, if they want to answer patients' uh, inquiries, they know what to answer as well. So this is why I went through all this education uh, program session um, till one year, and then uh, I took the decision to cut completely animal products at the hospital. No eggs, no honey, no uh, cheese, uh, no uh, white meat like they call it, no red meat, no processed meats. Well, everything that has flesh and blood and secretions are, are not welcome in my hospital. Nice. Okay. A couple of things. First of all, I'm guessing, or maybe it doesn't have one, but a lot of hospitals have gift shops. And when you said Plumas never clogged an artery, that would make a great mug or t-shirt number one to sell in your sure. hospital if you have a gift shop. And I would, you had already mentioned what I was going to ask you about the staff at the hospital existed before the hospital became vegan. So doctors, nurses, you know, all kinds of probably janitors, things like that. And of course you can't force them to eat the way you like, but I'm curious, how did they feel about it? Were they embracing of it? Did they quit? What was the, what was it like when, when you made that change? Well, of course, uh, Chef AJ, uh, first, when I introduced the notion of veganism, it was like I was introducing a notion came uh, coming from Mars. You know, it was like, what? Why would, uh, would anyone would stop eating meat? Why would anyone would ever consider doing so? So, of course, 
even doctors, uh, to my biggest surprise, they they didn't. First of all, they they weren't like really encouraging, you know. Uh, let let aside the, the nursing staff. So uh, this is why the 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 transition period was a must for me uh, to have to have intention uh, intensive like uh, courses. Uh, the thing is that uh, of course when I first introduced the idea, I had I had some uh, some resistance, right? Uh, but then again. While presenting them with facts, while presenting our doctors with what the WHO stated, when I when I tell them that listen, do you uh, do do you think that it's even moral for any doctor to be suggesting to their patients to eat uh, some carcinogenic foods, whether it's meat or something else? Well, it turns out in this case that it's meat. Is it ethical for any doctor, or is it ethical? or more for any hospital or healthcare institution to be offering for their patients carcinogenic food? Well, it's absurd. I mean, it's, the answers are, are written on the wall and the elephant is right here. We should just have the courage to look at the elephant and the eye. Uh, no hospital should, should even consider uh, offering to their patients carcinogenic food, whether it's, it's hummus, if, if it turns out to be carcinogenic or if it's meat. They should just omit and remove any carcinogenic food in their in their premises, and and not to forget that, and that our patients are here in the first place because they injected those poisons in in, in their body. So how can I uh, greet them after their surgery with the same food that that uh, that that get them to the hospital in the first place? So yeah, I had some resistance. For, from the medical staff and from the nursing staff. But then again, with all the information provided, they were just, okay, you're right. We can't argue with that. Maybe we will not personally change, but we can't argue with facts that you are presenting. That's absolutely incredible. You know, Susanna, who's watching live, wants to know, do you know of any former patients of the hospital or staff that actually made the switch to a vegan diet as a result of either being a patient or an employee at your hospital? Absolutely, not just patients and employees, but even doctors. And even the doctors that, that they were most opposed to the idea, they are starting to turn uh, vegan slowly but surely. I'm so glad uh, that uh, things are, are, are going this way. You know, uh, once the, the truth is out there, uh, people can't like turn or hide from it eternally. I mean, they can hide a few, few times, but at the end, they should acknowledge and if, if they are really concerned about, here we're talking health, if they are really concerned about their health, well, this is what they should uh, do in order not to visit me or any hospital that is anytime soon. When I try to talk to my patients, I tell them, listen, guys, what I'm trying to pr promote, I'm, I promote, I'm promoting something so that you guys won't be visiting me anytime soon. They, they, they look at me like, really? Uh, aren't you scared to lose patients? Aren't you scared to lose money? Well, first and utmost, the hospital is the humanitarian mission. And, and, and this is what I really believe so. So uh, uh, let's look at it from the ethical perspective, the humane perspective, and then after money will, will, will follow. It's, my, it's not my main concern. My main concern is to promote a healthy living and to tell people that, listen, guys, you want to adopt this, this, uh, this uh, lifestyle, fine. It's better for you if you don't want to. I can't force you, unfortunately, but I can provide you with information. This is why all my patients, they are greeted with a pamphlet with all, all the information on it, on why we turn vegan, why they should turn vegan, why they are here in the first place at the hospital, and what are the uh, nutrients, the, what are the food that they, they, they should eat, because a lot of people are scared to make the switch, you know, that I used to. I was scared when I made the transition. I thought that, wow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop eating those. What am I gonna eat? Well, I didn't know that actually I'm gonna be discovering so many, a wide variety of food and a wide variety of, of, of tastes. And actually my taste buds now are, are enhanced. Before I used to have four or three things, meat, uh, beef, chicken, eggs, beef, chicken, eggs, uh, you know, so my taste buds were limited. Where, uh, so 
this is why I try to to forward this to my patients. And going back to your question and the question of Susanna, yes, I do have patients that uh, were against, and then they they are they are adopting, and they are uh, it, it's it's showing uh, by uh, the improvement of their health. So this is encouraging for them as well to continue. They figure out that absolutely what I'm trying to tell them is is not wrong and is actually for their benefit in the first place. Right. How, how long ago did you institute full vegan in your hospital? And does every patient know any prospective patient coming in or are they surprised when they get there? Well, actually, I have from both. I have patients who uh, come especially to my hospital because I turned vegan. And I have another uh, uh, section of uh, or, or segment of, uh, of patients who uh, who happen not to know uh, and get surprised by our decision. This is when, uh, well, since our team is well trained now to answer all the questions, and since the rooms are filled by flyers and filled by posters and filled by information everywhere. So if they ever get like surprised why this hospital is not offering flesh and secretions and carcinogenic food, well, they have the answer everywhere. Every time we we present them with uh, their meal, they are presented as well with the pamphlet and as well our dietitian. Um, she uh, she educate them on the matter as well. So whether uh, I have patients that come just because they know that I'm vegan or those who don't know, I, I have actually from both. Has anyone ever checked in and then just left or, or are they allowed to have meat brought in if they refuse to eat the vegan food? Um, I'm really sorry. I can't. I can't accept that. Actually, I had few, I had few like requests uh, that uh, why don't you offer meat and uh, you can impose uh, uh, this uh, this uh, way of eating uh, to others. And if you want to be vegan, be vegan at your home, not at the hospital. What? Well, my answer is very clear. First of all, I'm not a restaurant, so I'm not a restaurant so that they can choose what to eat. They are here to get treated for their diseases, not to choose what they want to eat. This is one. Two, if they want to eat what caused them in the first place to visit me, they are free to do so, but not in my premises. They can go back home and eat what they want. But uh, listen, I know very well that while not all my patients, they will turn vegan. Uh, but what I, what I really want to, to do actually is to like forward the message that a hospital is not offering this kind of food and is offering the maybe there's something to look at it, you know? So I'm, I'm forwarding a message for everyone to uh, dig deeper into the matter. And I do believe in planting seeds, whether it's uh, through Lebanese vegans, through the activism that I'm doing up there, or through the hospital, it's planting seeds, giving the, the curiosity to people, to the patients, to do their own research and to come up with their own uh, position and stand toward this. There are so many questions for you in the chat, George. So let me get to them in the order they are received, because this is actually going to be one of my questions, because I've been brought into certain hospitals to try to make the food healthier. And when I've talked to like the, the whatever it's called, the administration of the hospitals, they say, well, we have to serve this kind of food because if we don't, the patients get upset and it hurts our satisfaction survey. So the question from Roseanne is, does your hospital have Press Garni patient satisfaction scores, and if so, did they suffer with serving vegan food? Well, let me tell you that to my biggest surprise, the majority of uh, the surveys that we conduct at the hospital are positive. Personally, I thought that, especially during the first period, we will be uh, receiving some backlash from here and there. Especially, it will be uh, shown and mentioned on uh, our satisfaction surveys that we conduct every now and then. Um, uh, but uh, to my biggest surprise, the majority of them are positive. And actually, I'm going to be showing you uh, a few of them uh, at the end of our interview while showing you some slides of everything that, we, that we're talking now. One of the slides actually shows a patient uh, that is uh, really satisfied and that they actually uh, added at the, at the bottom of the satisfaction survey where there is a space for you to just write whatever you want to write. Uh, they were really happy and they, they actually uh, said that they are happy that finally there's a hospital that is tackling 
well, not just uh, treating like symptoms, but tackling the source of the problem. So yeah, I've, I've, I've received uh, many positives and even the, the negative feedback, uh, I try to do some follow-up with them. Our dietitian try to do some following up, try to give them further, uh, uh, like, uh, further education and information on that matter. This being said, not all will be satisfied, not all will adapt a plant-based diet, but at least uh, we're doing what's right for everyone. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, Susanna wants to know, did you have to hire new chefs to cook the food or did you work with the existing staff to learn a new way to cook? No, actually, I kept my staff because I, I, we, we, we do have like loyal employees and loyal staff. Uh, we, we do have uh, some staff uh, that are really uh, that, that, that grew in our hospital. So uh, we're like a family, you know. I, I, I really don't consider that I have employees as much as we have, we have we, we're a big family. So I didn't let go of anyone, uh, but my mission was to, uh, to educate everyone. And especially, of course, uh, the kitchen staff, uh, because they are the first and utmost concern by preparing food and everything. So they went through, of course, through a training program uh, under the supervision of uh, our dietitian. And she made sure that uh, um, all our plant-based meals, they cover actually all uh, nutrients uh, that, that should be in every meal, like iron, calcium, uh, protein, and you name it. So yeah, I, I didn't hire a new vegan chef. I, I, uh, I gave uh, information to our existing chef, hoping that all uh, my staff, and especially the non-vegan staff, turn vegan because uh, we'll have much more merit to turn someone non-vegan into vegan than to just hire some, some vegan. Right. And, 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 you know, sometimes it can really be a benefit having a non-vegan chef cook vegan because their palate is more like everybody else's. True. And, True. Yeah, so, and, they, so they can relate with, with others, let's say. Yeah. So Zina says, other than hummus and tabbouleh, what other menu options do you serve? I'm gonna be showing you at the end with the slide, uh, the slide that I'm gonna be uh, uh, uploading. So, so many dishes, uh, mainly they are Arabic dishes, veganized. Okay, so um, what, what we try to, uh, to, to show to everyone that listen, it's not that we are like um, inventing new meals or creating new dishes. Actually, it's the same dish that, that you guys are eating. We just uh, don't put flesh in it. That's it. So everything is veganized. We veganize all their comfort food, okay? So that they, they, they figure out that, no, it's not just hummus and tabbouleh. And I mean, it's not that uh, if they uh, go vegan, they will just be eating hummus tabbouleh, which for me is the best food uh, in the world. But uh, for, for some people, you know, they are used to having their, their comfort food or whatever. So what I try to do is that I veganize vegan dishes so that even if someone doesn't know that we are a vegan hospital, they would uh, uh, be greeted with this meal and they would eat and they won't even know that, well, there's no uh, dairy or there's no uh, meat in it or, or, or so on and so forth. That's fantastic. Uh, Janet says, um, this is a great model. How can we influence other hospitals to do the same? This is a question that I've been asked so many times. Listen, I, I, I won't lie to you. In order for any hospital or any other business that is uh, to turn vegan, I think that the owner in, in a way or another should be vegan. I, I mean, uh, you, you can't have a hospital, uh, a vegan hospital run by non-vegan, or you can't have a, a vegan a business uh, vegan business run by non maybe you can but it won't be genuine it won't be authentic it won't be passionate you know i'm i'm passionate about what i'm doing i'm not just doing some some random uh, trendy i don't know what what uh, we, we might call it no i'm passionate about i'm doing what i'm doing and i'm i'm, I'm giving it my all so going back to your question for any hospital or any other businesses i think that the owner should be not far from the vegan message. Now, how can we influence other hospitals? Uh, well, first of all, by, by, by setting the, 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 the path straight. For me, 
uh, I am proud to be the, the very first hospital in the world to, to, uh, to, to omit carcinogenic food. Listen how, how absurd it is. We're living in, in 2022 and we are surrounded by so-called advanced countries, Canada, USA. You know, they are all proud to be like advanced countries. Listen, guys. You can't be serving carcinogenic food in a healthcare institute hospital. Doesn't take a vegan to know this. Doesn't care. Uh, doesn't. I mean, it's 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 obvious. It's obvious. So, how to influence others? Keep on stressing on on what we're doing. Keep on forwarding the message that meat is carcinogenic. It promotes diseases. Uh, diseases. It's what clogs arteries. It's what uh, causes colon cancer, dairy is what causes breast cancer, uh, 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 breast and prostate cancer, but all major diseases and cancers and pandemics and, and, and are caused by the poison that we're injecting in our body. So uh, by, by me setting the example so that others follow, uh, by uh, pushing on, on my social media and the social media of the hospital with the truth, eventually it should it should trigger some spark here and there and we create a snowball effect i really hope so and this is really what i i for me my biggest achievement won't be that i'm labeled as the very very first uh, husband this is is a secondary for me i would be extremely happy and satisfied to know that i was able to influence others yeah, well, Suzanne says you should be proud to be the first vegan hospital in the world. You know, George, a while back, many, many years ago, probably over 20 now, I was working at an assisted living facility and one of my coworkers had chest pain and we took him to the hospital and he was in the emergency room and they ran a bunch of tests. And they, while they were waiting for the tests to come back, the doctor said, either you had a heart attack or you have diabetes or both. We need all the results in. And, but it was there during the dinner hour, so they served him dinner. Now, this was a patient that either had heart disease, diabetes, or both. And I remember being there when they delivered his tray. I'll never forget. It was beef stew, a piece of white bread with butter, a carton of milk, and a piece of apple pie. There was not a single fruit or vegetable on the plate. And I'm thinking... This is what they serve a heart patient, a diabetic patient. And while I can't, I don't think the whole hospital system is going to go vegan overnight. Why can't hospitals at least have some healthy food for people that want it? It's crazy and it's absurd and the writings are on the wall. I mean, how can any sane people or person, let's say, uh, and especially at hospital sector, I mean, it's the place where they are supposed to know all, 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 all those stuff. I mean, all, all the, the poison that might uh, trigger diseases, they are supposed to know and to, to, uh, to forward the right message. Well, if hospitals and healthcare uh, institutes are not offering this kind of food, what can we expect? I mean, we are very far from, from a world where where, uh, where absurdity doesn't rule. I mean, today absurdity rules. Uh, it's so obvious that how can you, well, if your patient that you're treating for heart disease is suffering from, from diabetes, well, let's search for the cause of diabetes in the first place so that he had diabetes so that it, it evolved into heart disease. You know, uh, diabetes is not just hereditary. Well, a lot of people, you know, they just mentioned, you know, I, uh, uh, diabetes runs in my family. Well, actually what runs in your family is bad habits of bad eating. This is what runs in your family. You're inheriting bad habits from your parents and your parents inherited bad habits from their grandparents. This is hereditary, not just the biological thing. So uh, for all those reasons, uh, it's absurd for, for anyone, and especially for hospitals to be offering food that promotes diseases that they are trying to, to treat in the first place. Yep. So Linda wants to know if you could please tell us about your plans for the first animal sanctuary in the Middle East. Yes. Well, actually, uh, we started by, uh, by uh, registering Lebanese vegans as an official NGO that, so that we can move forward in a legal way. Uh, our first project uh, was the uh, the hub, the social hub, which I started 
uh, my uh, interview uh, by uh, by uh, stating uh, and informing about what we've done to the hub. And this is actually a, a one of the kind in the area, if, uh, if it's not actually in the world, with all the services that we're offering at the hub. So this is what uh, it was our first activity. Our second activity as well for the hub was uh, doing some billboard campaigns. I'm going to show you later a billboard campaigns that we've conducted uh, all, all through Lebanon and Beirut. Our first campaign, uh, we tackled uh, the pandemic and source of pandemic. And our second campaign, we tackled uh, ethics, environment, and health as well. Um, and for the sanctuary, this will be our third uh, phase where we are gathering the needed uh, funds uh, to find a, a decent land um, where we can uh, build the very first sanctuary, uh, sanctuary in, in Lebanon. We, we really uh, need uh, such place because uh, animals well are suffering. And if we ever do some rescue and, and, and all those, those important uh, uh, activism aspects, we need to have, uh, well, a sanctuary. This is in our plan. And I'm glad to be collaborating with Tab Alex. Um, uh, he has so much connections here and there. Uh, he is like by everyone. He has such a nice approach in in doing activism. Maybe a nicer approach than mine. I'm maybe a bit harsh in in, in the way I present facts. So uh, I'm glad that uh, when we combined our forces to achieve what we've achieved so far and to eventually be achieving the sanctuary, the long-awaited sanctuary. Wow, amazing. Anne says, you're so right on. I'm very impressed with your passion. We must be ver as verbal as we can. We can learn from our world brothers and sisters and she loves you. Have you ever thought of being a consultant to hospitals, other places? Uh, well, I, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind if I ever was asked to do so, I would be glad because, well, my, my mission is to, to spread uh, this message uh, the further and the, the farther way possible. So of course, if ever, uh, if I'm asked to do so, I'll be more than glad. But unfortunately, uh, so far, I didn't get any proposal. Uh, back to the, the first thing, the majority of uh, like uh, hospital owners are meat eaters and they do enjoy the, their steak saignant. The saignant in French, it means a bloody steak, let's say. Wow. Have you, has anyone in your country um, given any press to you? Did they find it interesting or anything like that? Actually, uh, well, we had a much more uh, important, let's say, or uh, recognition from the international community. Uh, the international community was really impressed but, uh, by what we, uh, we, we did as, as a decision to stop all animal products in the hospital, more than the, the local, uh, weirdly enough, I don't know why, but uh, uh, maybe, you know, uh, the meat culture in Lebanon is quite engraved in, in their mentality. Uh, maybe, you know, they took it in an offensive way. You know, whenever you, you, you mention the word vegan, people uh, tend to be offensive. They prefer to, uh, to, to listen uh, to the plant-based wording more than the vegan wording, because the vegan word, uh, it, it makes them feel un uncomfortable. You know, they, they know that, that uh, they're doing something wrong, whether, whereas uh, if, if, uh, if you mention plant-based without mentioning veganism or the word vegan, for them, it's just a diet. You know, it's like a, a paleo diet or whatever diet uh, that is. So they would take it more in a friendly way, you know. But personally, for me, it's clear it's veganism. Veganism is one thing and plant-based is another thing. Of course, they do complement each other but they are mutually exclusive as well. Yeah, I always say I'm plant exclusive. I never liked that word plant-based because it's too much wiggle room, you know? Absolutely. I mean- it's, it's, I, I really find the wording uh, uh, plant-based quite apologetic, you know? Uh, whenever someone or a restaurant uh, label themselves as plant-based without even mentioning the word vegan, for me, there's a big question mark, you know? And uh, actually, what I wanted to tell you is that what's hurting our, our movement and our cause is, is not, is not uh, meat eaters as much as apologetic vegans. I mean, when you have an apologetic vegan who, who, uh, who uh, for him, uh, he tries to like sugarcoat the truth or beat around the bush, 
or try to not hurt oppressors' feelings. This is when you are promoting the message that, listen, guys, it's true that uh, veganism, it's an injustice thingy. But you know what? You can take it into a second degree injustice. You can take it slightly. You can take it like, okay, fine. Um, so, yeah, for me, being apologetic hurts a lot. I prefer someone not to be promoting than to promote it in, a, in an apologetic way. Then again, it's giving the impression that it's a second degree injustice and there's nothing in a hurry uh, to take action. Whereas, uh, as we speak right now, Chef AJ, animals are, are being tortured in slaughterhouse in the most barbaric way possible, imagine. So, yeah, this is what I wanted to add. Well, thank you for your work. How can we support you? Is there a way to support you? Well, uh, you, you can ask uh, your audience to follow us on social media and to support us in every way they can. A comment from here, a support from there. Everything, uh, a nice word, you know, is good enough, let's say. <laughs> What's the name of your hospital? Hayek, Hayek Hospital. Nice. Well, I, I mean, I hope I'm never in any hospital, but if anything happens and a doctor says you need to go to the hospital, I'll go fine. As long as it's Hayek Hospital, I'm not going anywhere else. You can, you can take a trip and come over. <laughs> yeah, that, that's like my biggest fear about hospitals is I'm going to starve. I mean, because, you know, there's nothing, even if it's vegan, I really, I mean, I doubt it would be healthy. If, even if I, if of you. Course. Vegan of course. Food. I mean, it, it shouldn't be processed. It shouldn't be uh, with a lot of oil. I know that you are against oil. You know, in Lebanon, we have olive oil and it's part of the Mediterranean diet in a way or another. So, yeah. Uh, other I'm, not against oil, I'm not against oil in the same way I'm against animal products, but realize I work okay. with a population that is generally overweight, wanting to lose weight. So, I, I mean, I'm just happy if it's vegan, honestly. Of course. But then again, then again, what I try to do at the hospital is not just to offer just vegan food, but healthy vegan food. That's amazing. Now, do you eat at your, I, I'm assuming you work at your hospital. So do you get to eat there like a couple meals a day? Of course, I do, at, at, I do it at the cafeteria. And uh, at the cafeteria, we have different kinds of food. Uh, we, we have some veganized sandwiches that uh, uh, meat eaters are used to have. Uh, so I introduced uh, a menu that covers all, all those comfort foods. Uh, and a lot of visitors, uh, they just uh, pass by the cafeteria and they, they're just like, is this vegan? Is this vegan? How come? It's, yes, it's all vegan. Wow, how? And everything. So this is how I trigger conversation. I just inform them that, listen, guys, meat itself has zero taste. It's how you marinate them. It's how you add spices. It's how you add vegan stuff in it so that it, it, uh, you make it edible. Uh, so uh, the base is different. It's not meat. It's not flesh. It could be lentil, it could be mushrooms, it could be soy, it could be anything, it could be burgul, it could be anything but flesh uh, detached from a tortured and mutilated animal. Right. Well, I just am so impressed with you because you're the first one. It's sort of like you're the first man to walk on the moon and hopefully there'll be others following in your footsteps. You know, we have um, a hospitals in the United States are called is a religion called the Seventh Day Adventist. And generally they're vegetarian, at least according to the teachings of the person that founded the religion, Ellen White. At least my understanding is they're supposed to be not all are, but most are and some are vegan. And it was really interesting because my grandfather was a patient in an Adventist hospital over 40 years ago. And I remember going to the cafeteria. I was already vegan then. And the cafeteria was vegetarian, not vegan, but it was vegetarian. You could get vegan food because they wouldn't serve meat in the cafeteria, but they still would serve it to the patients. And I thought, this is backwards. You already are a, a vegetarian religion. You already got a vegetarian cafeteria because of that thing about how patients will, will have negative comments on these surveys, which apparently to hospitals are important. And that, that's just so sad because if all of them would go vegan, they could all be complaining at the same time. <laughs> Absolutely, it's true. And, and probably they were scared to lose uh, patients and to lose business and to lose money. This is, uh, I, I presume it was their primary uh, concern. This is why they, they didn't serve, let's say, uh, meat their cafeteria, but they, they did serve to the patients. Uh, I personally uh, don't, don't have this, uh, this concern. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really like ready to lose a few patients who are like against what I'm doing, 
but at least my conscience is clear. I know that I'm, I'm, I'm going uh, late at night uh, to bed, putting my head in uh, the, uh, the pillow, and I know that my conscience is clear and that I'm not harming anyone just for the money, just for the profit sake. That's great. There was a funny comment from uh, Bev when you were talking about diabetes. Diabetes doesn't run in your family. No one runs in your family. So <laughs> that is so yeah, funny. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I saw, I saw absolutely. oh um, there's a question from Elizabeth. In general, in Lebanon, is, are there vegan restaurants there? This is a very good question. You know, when I, when I started doing my outreach, especially through Lebanese vegans, um, a lot of uh, people and friends of mine, even family members, they, they came to me and they just like, you know, George, uh, well, you, you might be right and veganism might be better, but you know what? Vegan food is really expensive and it's not accessible, you know? Well, I just like uh, try to uh, give them the hint. And listen, guys, our naturally born food is vegan by default without even me existing in this world. Hummus was, was like years ago, tabbouleh and so on and so forth. The all Lebanese restaurants, all Lebanese restaurants, they do serve vegan food. And actually the majority of the food that they serve is actually vegan. If you open up their menu, you have the meza, the meza like, 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 like they call it, the cold meza and the hot meza. The majority of what you can order is vegan. And then at the end of the menu, you have a small section for barbecue, you know, the skewers and barbecue uh, stuff. But the majority of the Lebanese food by default is vegan. So when I come to them and, and, and remind them that, well, listen, when you go to a Lebanese restaurant, what do you order? The majority of what you order is vegan. And at the end, they will bring you the barbecue. Thing. So... It's extremely easy to be vegan in Lebanon. It's, it's not, uh, and actually the, the misconception that veganism is expensive. Well, if you want to look at it from, from, uh, from uh, uh, the substitute, let's say, if you want to buy some meat substitute or dairy or, or let's say cheese substitute, it might be more expensive a dollar or two than the counterpart meat version. But not, let, uh, let's not forget why is it, more expensive. First of all, there's something called demand and supply. Anyone who uh, went through university, this is the basics of any, any um, education, uh, financial and uh, economic situation, demand and supply. And since the demand of vegan product is not as high as meat products, so uh, the, the, the supply is less, hence the price is increased. This is one. Two, and most importantly, are the subsidies paid by the government funded by our own taxpayers. They fund the meat and dairy industry and egg industry so that their products are cheap and accessible for everyone. So it's not true that vegan food is more expensive than animal-based food. And actually, with all the unfortunate situation in Lebanon, one positive point emerged in all this chaos is that since the government has no longer money. They, they went bankrupt. The government is almost bankrupt now. Uh, so what they did is they stopped their subsidies, hence exposing the real prices of the, the food. You know, suddenly the price of meat surged. Suddenly the price of eggs, of cheese, of milk, of dairy milk surged. And suddenly plant-based food turned out to be less expensive. So uh, the myth idea uh, has been debunked with our unfortunate situation in Lebanon. You know, George, Sylvia is making a comment that's a good point, that there's really not an incentive for most hospitals to serve vegan food because uh, then, they, then they won't have six patients and they won't make any money. Well, um, it's true that us vegans, uh, we get less Sick. This is true. But then again, we are not superheroes. We do get sick. So uh, maybe their concern is, yes, probably if they, they go through a plant-based system, they might be losing uh, customers or patients. Uh, but this is because they are not convinced about what they are trying to forward. 
whenever they are convinced, whenever they are informed, whenever they are educated, nothing will stop them. It would be interesting if they could do a study with your patients and patients in another hospital to see like if the healing time shorter, if they recover faster. And I was thinking maybe in your cafeteria, you could put a sign that says, eat this food so you won't have to be a patient here. Uh, this is something that I can add to my already existing uh, messages here and there. I mean, if you ever visit my hospital, from, from the first step into my hospital, you will be greeted by flyers and posters everywhere. So, uh, yeah, I'm doing activism inside the hospital, uh, too. Well, Elizabeth says if you ever want to come to the United States, she'd love to host you. She's been on the show many times, so she's not just some Thank you, Elizabeth. Daughter, and she lives in San Diego. So nice from her. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you so much. Right. Well, people really want to see the food. You said you had some slides and they're just anxious to see yes. what you eat. Of course. Do you want me to, to share my screen now? I would love to. I would love to see what you've been talking about. Okay. Uh, so uh, I have a few uh, videos, short videos, and I have a few pictures. Do you want me to, uh, to show you everything or just the pictures? That's okay. I mean, I got, I got time. If you've got time, I'm really enjoying your... your okay. Sounds sound good to me. Sounds good to me. So uh, I guess I'm going to be removing my iPod so that you guys can, can hear the videos. I guess it, it works this way. So here I am. Can you say something so that I know that I can hear you? Yeah, just I'm, I'm changing oh, yeah. the perfect. setting into oh, no. perfect. Uh, building output. Perfect. Okay, this is one. And I guess we're good to go. I'm going to sharing my screen, desktop. So uh, is my screen shared? Yes, your screen share. It's like a beautiful yeah. kind of Yeah, yeah absolutely. So I'm going to be starting by showing you guys uh, a video of why vegan, the very first conference in Lebanon uh, held at the hospital. So you guys can know exactly what I was talking about concerning the conference. Okay, so this was the conference. And now this is what uh, the WHO stated concerning Yeah, this is concerning uh, the WHO, what they uh, uh, stated concerning infectious diseases and, and uh, uh, zoonotic diseases, actually. This is the hospital.
Okay. Okay, this is uh, the billboard that uh, the campaign that that we've uh, uh, that we've been through. Okay, this is other uh, campaign tackling the the diseases, the zoonotic diseases, how how they jump from animals to to humans, and that affects everything. This is our last campaign. Uh, where we tackle uh, the ethical aspect, the environmental aspect, and the health aspect, mentioning that if you're uh, are you ethical because meat equals stabbing and slitting the throat, so it's not really compatible with being ethical. Are you in an environmentalist? Well, you can't be an environmentalist and not vegan because meat well is the number one uh, cause of climate change. And if you are concerned about your health, well, you cannot uh, well eat meat since meat has been classified as carcinogenic. I was trying to combine all the aspects in one billboard. Uh, and this is the food distribution that we conduct on uh, every Thursday, uh, where our uh, volunteers, they come to the hub and they pick up um, um, food, clothes, uh, blankets, shoes, toys, and so far, we've distributed more than 5,800 meals. This is uh, some uh, pictures from the hospital and how we provide uh, our team and our patients with uh, education. So this is a few slides showing how we do it at the hospital. So this is one of uh, the, the comments that uh, we are uh, that we will receive. Okay, and this is how we educate people on, on giving them some uh, fun games to do. So education while uh, uh, combining with fun activities. This is the vegan food pyramid, exposing the truth to everyone to the patient and their family as well. And this is the pamphlet that I was talking about that is presented to each uh, patient on every meal, okay, so that they can read about it and get educated. And as well, I stopped all the canned bottled uh, juices because as you know, they are filled with uh, sugar and artificial uh, flavoring. And I only offer fresh orange juice in my premises and the cafeteria. Uh, something else I forgot to mention is that uh, I replaced my placemat, place so the previous one, as you can see over here, we used to have ham, we used to have cheese, and we used to have eggs over here. This is our old one, and this is our new one, where you can see a lot of uh, messages uh, promoting veganism. As you can see, my body is a garden, not a graveyard. Almost never caused the pandemic. Food is grown, not born. For our health, for the planet, fellow earthlings. Uh, CDC, what they stated about three out of four uh, infectious diseases. And especially what the WHO uh, stated uh, about processed meat being carcinogenic and red meat, as well as providing them with the link so that they can check for themselves what we are uh, providing. So this is the before and after. And going back to our food that we present, this is some sample uh, images I'm gonna show you of what we offer to our patients. Can you see it clearly? Yeah, Great. it looks delicious. Great, and now going back to uh, the street activism that we do, what we do on every Sunday night, uh, we hit uh, a busy spot in Beirut and we do some live cooking where we, uh, we prepare each, each time something different. Uh, the, the veganized version of, uh, of the sandwiches, the, vegan, the comfort food of meat eaters, what they, uh, they love to eat uh, uh, those specific sandwiches. So we veganize them and we do some live cooking so that we would attract people. And at the same time, we have uh, TV showing footages of what those industries try to hide from, from us. 
uh, with that strength is to hide those images and our strength is to show those images. So uh, while uh, offering a food to people that, uh, that, that are coming through, we conduct um, uh, some conversation and talk to them and show them uh, footages so that uh, we do the outreach in, in, in this particular way. So this, as you can see, happy uh, people coming over. Uh, I, I, do, I do believe that by offering them food, you are breaking this, uh, this barrier between you and, and the other, and the conversation can flow much easier. Are all the billboards in English or are some of them in Arabic, Zina wants to know? Uh, listen, uh, for, uh, from uh, so far we've conducted in English because uh, for the very simple reason, uh, the outreach is higher. You know, English is the international language. Even in our country, uh, English is very widely spoken. Now, of course, uh, we do plan to, uh, to be conducting uh, Arabic billboards. Same goes to the, the post that I conduct for the Lebanese Vegans uh, account. The majority of them are uh, in English because I'm not just tackling Lebanon, but I'm trying to reach everyone everywhere. Okay, uh, this is, I'm gonna be showing you some pictures of the hub. Um, so, uh, and, and this is the video uh, that was uh, done by Seb Alex, uh, informing about uh, the, the, so the social hub. So I'm gonna be, showing you this video, it's uh, three minutes. Thank you. 
Okay, so this was a video done by Seb. And this is a quick idea of what we do at the center. Distribute free uh, vegan food, clothing to the homeless, immigrant refugees, struggling families every week. A free events, screening, workshop, lectures, market, um, billboards. Well, I invite everyone, uh, Chef AJ, to uh, log into our Instagram account or Facebook so that they can have a wide idea of, of what we do and what we have. This is the library. So the account, they can log into our Lebanese Vegan Social Hub or Lebanese Vegans as well. This is the library. This is the, some pictures of the events that we conduct. So as you can see, and here um, we have Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Um, so yeah, it was quite encouraging. And this is our last um, event at the 5th of June, not long ago, two weeks ago, uh, the National Animal Rights Day. We collaborated with the international organization NARD and uh, we were able to, uh, to, uh, to have this march in Lebanon as well. This, uh, this is all the diseases that uh, came from uh, from animals, this uh, this flyer is posted at the hospital so that everyone can see it as well. Uh, this is past, uh, patient feedback uh, on turning the hospital vegan. Uh, it's uh, written in French and then in Arabic, and I translated it in English so that you guys can can see it. I like the fact that High Hospital has adopted a vegan plant based diet, a diet that has many advantages and diseases and decreased diseases. The other one, excellent hospital, the healthcare service are decent and humane. I like the idea of vegan food because it's healthy and can even prevent many diseases and turning the hospital vegan is excellent. So this is one of the uh, patients that were really satisfied with our transition. Few pictures of the conference and there you have it, I'm done. Nice. Thank you, George. A couple more questions came in the chat, if you don't yeah. mind answering them. Uh, how big is your hospital and does it have a, an ER, an emergency room or a psych ward? Okay, so uh, my hospital is considered as a, a small to medium hospital. Uh, we have more than uh, 75 beds. Okay. And what was the second question? Um, is there an emergency room or a psych uh, of ward? Of course. Of course, we do have emergency room, we have an operating room, we have a dialysis department, we have a cancer uh, department as well, a surgery, one day surgery. We have everything, but we don't have open heart. Nice. Well, with the food you're eating, they probably won't need that. Because Catherine is wondering, do the patients come to your hospital or sometimes choose it because it's vegan? Because is it possible that like their doctor also works at other hospitals? Well, uh, the majority of, of uh, people, especially lately, uh, you know, uh, the truth can be hide uh, eternally. Uh, the rise in veganism, as you incited our discussion today, is really happening. I mean, people are getting aware every day. And especially with the economical uh, situation in Lebanon, uh, meat and their derivatives are extremely inaccessible for everyone. So uh, eventually, a lot of people are uh, turning vegan, uh, whether they want it or, or not really. So uh, this triggered uh, the curiosity of a lot of patients and a lot of people here in Lebanon to consider a plant-based uh, diet. And hence, uh, it's, uh, it's facilitating the idea of a hospital being vegan and accepting the idea much more. That is so cool. Well, George, you are just, uh, you're a, a pioneer. What can I tell you? I mean, this is amazing. Thank oh, here, one more question. Susanna wanted to know, have you ever thought about writing a book? But I'm thinking a documentary might be even better of showing the actual experience of the hospital. Of course. Actually, when I was having my interview with uh, Jane Valencia, uh, uh, she gave me the idea of, of why not like, uh, conduct a small documentary about uh, the transitioning of the hospital. And it might be like a blueprint for, for other hospitals to follow. Actually, I've, I've taken her advice into consideration 
and uh, I'm working into producing like a small documentary on, on everything that we're doing, hoping that it might help uh, someone else or other hospitals to follow our steps. So yeah, we're, we're into that. Great. Well, I hopefully can't... soon. Hopefully soon, I'll be able to to announce it to everyone. Hopefully. Well, great. Well, thank you so much. This has just been such a pleasure to learn about the work you do. Same here. Same here, Chef AJ. Oh, seriously, right. thank you. So much. Uh, guys, everyone, you know, follow him on the socials. Share this interview, and let's change the world the way George has. Thank you so much, George. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. My God, the pleasure was mine. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is one of the three daughters of Dr. Joel Furman, who has not yet been on the show. Her name is Jenna Furman, and she's going to be making mushroom tacos. Thanks again, George. I'm so Thank impressed you. by you.